ahead and call the meeting to order. With Jerry, uh, roll call. I guess if you would note that Planning Commissioners Lori and Bill are out today and that uh, Lloyd LaCroix is representing the county board today. Um, approval of the June 12th minutes. Did anyone have any additions, corrections, deletions? And if not, I'd entertain a motion for approval of the minutes as presented. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. <coughs> approval of the agenda. Uh, for the audience, if you haven't grabbed it uh, in the back bookshelf, there is a copy of the agenda. If you uh, don't have a copy and wish to have one, uh, today's items are uh, uh, the consent calendars will be item 3 through 10 and then uh, other items through 19. Does have, anyone have any additions or changes to the agenda? And if not, I'd entertain a motion for approval of the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify it by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Consent calendar. The following items have been placed on the consent calendar for action to be taken on all items in accordance with the staff's recommendation for a single vote. Any item may be removed uh, from the consent calendar by planning commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration. The findings of this planning commission are recommendations that Painting County Board of Commissioners will make the final decision on uh, conditional use permits. Uh, action here is final unless it's approved to the board. Um, and if you're in the audience and wishing to speak on items three through 10, if they haven't been pulled by uh, staff or planning com uh, commission member, um, now would be the time to pull it after PJ reads those into the record, so. All right, PJ kind of a director planning, planning department. Item number three, conditional use permit review 1309 for Beverly Sears to review an accessory structure prior to a principal structure in a suburban residential district. Staff recommends to end conditional use permit 1309 with the applicant's concurrence. Item four, conditional use permit review 1310 for Bruce and Sandra Rampelberg to review a vacation home rental in the limited agriculture district. Staff recommends to end conditional use permit 1310 with the applicant's concurrence. Item five, conditional use permit review 1615 for Tom and Lynn Disler to review a recreational vehicle to be used as a temporary residence while building a single family residence on the subject property. Staff recommends to continue the review of conditional use permit 1615 to the July 24th, 2017 Planning Commission meeting. Item six, conditional use permit review 1617 for West River Electric, Ross Johnson as the agent, to review the expansion of an existing electrical substation in a limited agriculture district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1617 with nine conditions. Item seven, construction permit review 1605 for Pennington County Highway Department to review the construction of a slide area along Kelly, High Ro Kelly Hill Road. Uh, staff recommends approval of the extension of construction permit 1605 with 10 conditions. Item eight, conditional use permit 1721 for Cricket Lawn Services to allow for the storage of equipment for a lawn and landscaping business in the subject property. Staff recommends approval of conditional use permit 1721 with 15 conditions. Item nine, conditional use permit 1723 for Cliff Dahl to review an existing accessory structure to remain on the subject property to include the addition of a new pole, uh, pole frame building. Uh, staff recommends to continue conditional use permit 1723 to the July 10th, 2017 planning commission meeting. Item 10, comprehensive plan amendment 1705 for Kelly development. Ryan Kelly is the agent to review the Pen to amend the Pennington County comprehensive plan to change the future land use from heavy industrial district to planned unit development district. Staff recommends approval of comprehensive plan 1705. Is there any items of staff who wishes to pull? No, sir. Planning commission, anyone wishing to pull any of those consent items three through 10? Audience, anyone in the audience wishing to pull item, any of the items that were just read for further consideration? If not, I'd entertain a motion for approval of consent calendar items three through 10 as presented. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion, uh, consent calendar is approved. Thank you. I'll take us to item 11. 
Good morning, Brittany Molitor, Environmental Planning Supervisor. Item 11 is a layout plat, PL 1714, to combine eight lots to create Track D revised as a Circle B Ranch subdivision. As the property stands right now, there are eight existing lots. in this subdivision and they want to create one 34.653 acre lot. Currently lots one through six are vacant of any structures. Track C contains 10.42 acres and it contains a single family residence and an on-site wastewater treatment system. Track D is 12.86 acres and it contains a pole barn with a lean-to. The proposed lot will contain both the home and the lean-to, there will be a rezone that's required because there will be dual zoning on this property of Suburban Residential and Limited Agriculture District. The lots will still contain Vic Drive, which goes through the center of this property because it will need to provide access to a property to the north. Um, it was routed through our interdepartmental review. Um, during that time, there was some concern from the Register of Deeds and uh, the Department of Equalization concerning Vic Drive as it appears Vic Drive is constructed outside that easement area um, on the property and they would like to see um, that actually be where it's located. <coughs> so staff is recommending approval of layout plat with 12 conditions. I had a question on, you know, Vic Drive, you know, you pointed out it doesn't seem to line up with where the platting is. And I know that this isn't a, Plat, but I mean, it looks like Campfire Drive is also kind of in the same situation where the road, to, and I mean, this abuts that. So I mean, is there, is, uh, I, but I mean, it's not really part of their action, I imagine, but I mean, that, then you end up with a, basically a buffer from where the road is to where the road right away really is. Well, when I had spoke to um, the Register of Deeds and them, they just felt that it would cause issue later in the future if it wasn't actually constructed in the easement. Um, Campfire Drive, right now, there's no platting going on, so we didn't really address that one. We only looked at Vic Drive. I, I, just to me, I guess it could end up with being confusion, because I mean, like, it appears that, like, they'll think the road is further away, and so they could be encroaching on the true right away for Campfire Drive with use of that land. Oh, you mean to look at the plat with to the, the south? With the platting of the, with this action with the eight lots. So Campfire Drive to the south, you mean like if Campfire Drive, the, it looks like it's actually Campfire Drives to the south of their platted right away. Right, so they could end up encroaching on the true right away of Campfire Drive thinking that's their property. Oh, you mean the lots one through six? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. So, to, to, to me, I wonder if it shouldn't be cleaned up with this action. Otherwise, uh, or at least clearly pointed out where those lot lines are for, so they aren't encroaching on the true right-of-way. Well, it is a layout plat, so we could make that a, a condition of approval or add that as a condition. I, I think that'd be appropriate to clean that or at least have it clearly delineated where the true right-of-way is so they aren't encroaching on the right-of-way on Campfire or Vic Drive. Right. Because the concern was if you look through Lot 6, Vic Drive is actually through Lot 6 and not. Yeah. Right. And, <coughs> I mean, if you look at it, it almost looks like it's a driveway that would go to the revised track and that Vic Drive isn't even constructed. That was the concern. Yeah. That if you, I mean, if they make it one lot, you actually have the way that it is right now. Yeah. It could be misconstrued as a driveway, and somebody could come in in that private easement at some time. Well, by the same token, mm -hmm. they could construe that the mm -hmm. campfire drive right away is their property use, and it's not. Correct. So I think that needs to be cleaned up with this action, too. Okay. Mr. Chair, are, are you suggesting to um, shift the actual right away to match up with the road, or are you suggesting that they move the road? Uh, I, well, at least... <laughs> Where, well, technically, they should move the road where the road should be, where it's platted. I'm not sure that's... Are, are they the same owners? No. The Along Campfire Drive, there's multiple owners. And is it a county road or private road? No, I don't believe. 
It, yeah, it's a private access easement, just like Vic Drive is. So it's a discussion between landowners at this point then? I would believe so. The surveyor is here. He probably knows more if you have questions. I'm actually not. Oh, you're not? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you just know. The different action, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh -oh. Anyway, I guess that's my, my concern, though. I could just see where, you know, the if there's an easement platted and there, you know, the it's, well, if it's, is it Campfire Drive a platted road or just is that a private easement? I don't know. I didn't look at, and that's not on their layout plat either. They don't identify well, it. They only my identify. Would be, I, don't, I, I don't know if I'm necessarily advocating for moving the road or, or moving the easement. I guess what I'm saying is that the, their lot line should be clearly defined and defined so they are aware where their pins are at and where their land ends, even though that doesn't seem to abut the road. Okay. Because I could see where that just, it'd be real easy to encroach on that use. Other questions or comments for Brittany? I guess uh, I, I would suggest that maybe that just as uh, the verbiage that you have for a dick drive, basically kind of have that so it's clearly defined for campfire drive also. I don't know. I don't know how you want to. Okay. Uh, do you have a suggestion on? And that the easement for... So do you want the easement for Campfire Drive on this plat? Is that what you're saying? Because they show Campfire Drive on there. They just don't show the easement, like where it's located. Well, I guess I'm advocating for when they, that they actually put pins at where the deflection points are. It's clearly defined so they know where they're, if there aren't, there may be uh, lot corners now and all that, but I mean, so they, Landowner is clearly aware where his boundaries are. Dean? I hate to jump in having come in kind of green, but I think. You're an LSO, so But I know, <laughs> I, I think I know what he's talking about too, okay. because uh, uh, it, a lot of times when a plat is done to combine a lot of lots, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, the landowner is not that interested in getting a lot of survey field work. So they'll rely on the previous monumentation. I think what you're saying is. For one thing, this layout plat doesn't have any indication as to whether there's physical marks out there. I think that's an important okay. thing you're talking about. Secondly, I believe Vic Drive is private. Mm -hmm. And uh, however they want to deal with it, I think all you're really saying is it needs to be dealt with in a legal sense because one or the other, either it needs to be fit the right of way that was given to it or fix that little right of way here. But it does seem to be a private road. As the mechanics of it, I think if I were doing it, I would just, uh, with this plat, vacate the old, but delineate mm -hmm. the route and continue to call it a private drive, benefiting apparently lot C up above. Oh. That's all I got. Uh, you have suggested verbiage that you're putting down? Well, I'm just trying to think of how we can, because there's more private, there's other property owners to the south. There's several of them, how well, we can. And like I said, I'm not necessarily plat. advocating moving the road on that, but I mean, I think that if the lot pins don't exist, they should be existing clearly delineated to the this platting or this, re, you know, combining a lots where that border is so they aren't encroaching on what may be a platted right away. We, I guess at this point we don't know if it's an easement or right away on Campfire Drive. I don't. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you think this Pardon? should be continued until this is straightened out? It's a, just a layout plat. I mean, it just, uh, so I mean, I think if we have conditions, it's going to come forward as a minor platter. Uh, or replat. 
anyways, I mean, I, I, I think with the layout plat, this it could just be covered with the comments now. I think I'm pretty much in agreement on that. Make sure we mark it out so that if somebody is in those lots and they decide, oh, well, our property goes all the way down to the road, campfire drive, they don't assume to encroach and try to do something and then find out later, oh, wait, I can't really build there. Well, there's only one. This is going to one lot, so there, it's already built. But they could have other buildings. Right, they could have outbuildings, yeah. certainly. I, I, think, I think it just would help prevent any future problems if it's just clearly defined where the border, the legal border is. Seems like something needs to be added to number three then. Um, say, clarify um, the boundaries of the road to the south. Is it now clear here? Clearly define the Camp property fire. boundaries of lots one through six adjacent as adjacent to Campfire Drive. Yeah. And then you could be more specific in the next plotting. Mr. Chair. So number three could be rewritten that says prior to the new plat submittal, the existing 40 foot private drive and I um, be, re, uh, be uh, vacated and um, Vic Drive be uh, reestablished. Is that kind of what, what you're looking for there? On the new plat? I think we need to add Campfire Drive because that's what Sig was getting at. Yeah. He wants that defined as well. So just adding a comment on Campfire Drive should um, prompt investigation for the next platting. Oh, so Michelle's suggestion was just to revise the plat to show what we where the actual right of way or the private drive is instead of I guess relocating it's just revising the plat since it's a private drive but Vic drive is already established right, right. so they're, they're not going to want that just hanging out in space anywhere so I, I think that they'll they, they'd want to vacate that and then allocate the 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 easement on top of the existing alignment for Vic drive something along those lines mm -hmm. And then we could also put something in there that the, the new plat shall require uh, property boundary definition. monumentation. A, a definition of property boundary along Campfire Drive. Yeah, yes, there you go. as a requirement of the, the plat approval. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not necessarily advocating Campfire Drive be relocated because it does involve multiple property owners, and I think that would get messy, but it just trying to avoid future problems mm -hmm. of encroachment. So. Is the applicant here and wishing to speak? Uh, I, I if you could, I, I apologize. I'm like, I'm, I'm being... Maybe you could come to the podium, please. Sir. So, my intention here was not to. Um, I didn't want to do anything on Campfire Drive. Um, what prompted this was a uh, conversation with equalization, and equalization. What they kind of told me was, is if I come. Since we don't have any plans to develop one through six, if we were just to develop, if we were just to incorporate one through six along with C and D and make it into one, and then we were, our intention was not to change anything really, but just to move one, two, three, four, five, and six into C and D. And I'm not advocating that you necessarily change anything on Campfire Drive, but I mean, the I, way it is right now, Campfire Drive, it appears, is by both the aerial photography and also just the, the alignment on the uh, map sheet, it looks like there's a gap between where the actual road is versus where the road was defined on the plat. 
And so if, if you, you aren't aware where the par property boundary <coughs> is, there could be encroachment or, of use into that right-of-way. I think it's all pinned. Well, that's what I'm just, I guess what yeah, I'm asking It's for all is, there. I mean, we could go out there and find all, all those um, pins on, we know exactly where the border on 6-5 or 1 through 6 on both sides of it are. That's basically all I'm leading towards. If they aren't pinned, I think they should be. Yeah, clearly. I mean, they're there, they're out there. There's well, a, and that that could be whether it's a, well, I don't, if you're proceeding with a minor plat, probably for the final yes. action. Isn't that what the survey's for? Mm -hmm. And we we got the survey done. Yeah. So that's Vic Drive. That's that's actually not Vic Drive. Mm -hmm. Well, excuse me, excuse yeah, me. That is Vic Drive. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, it, it comes down and, and Vic Drive turns, but that one is my private drive. Well, mm -hmm. when you go around the corner, that gets into my private drive, going to my place. Vic Drive would veer off of that. Yeah. So. But that was the concern about Vic Drive, because you don't know where his private <coughs> drive is in the actual easement. Because there is a property to the north, I believe this one. Right. That needs to be accessed. Right, and so that's why we're going to maintain Vic Drive, where nothing's going to change on that. Vic Drive stays exactly where it's at, and Campfire Drive stays exactly where it's at, and one through six just incorporates into. I think they actually said that they incorporated it into D. Is what. Uh, well, and I, that's not the question. My my concern is just the, that. If you if you aren't aware where that the frontage is along Campfire Drive and the road is actually further south than it's supposed to be, there could be encroachment beyond the pins, and, and it, that's what I'm just advocating. If it isn't pinned, it should be pinned, and it should be clearly shown on the whatever the final action is, the minor plat action. Okay, well, I I wasn't doing anything to. I haven't changed anything. I mean, I literally haven't changed anything. I, I, I recognize that. I keep saying that. Okay, well, I keep uh, hearing you. I'm telling uh, you. I uh, mean, we don't have to do any of this. It, I think what he's saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, is this is the layout plat that was submitted, and usually the plats will have little notes, dots, or dots with holes in them that show pins that have been found. This doesn't show any of that, and I think that's what you're getting at. That's adding those yeah. pinpoints onto the plat. If they're already there, it should be a relatively easy. I'm, I'm certainly not down here to try to create a problem. I'm trying to, um, I mean, this is what equalization is. Well, and I'm said. trying to avoid a future problem where there's unintentional encroachment because there's a grassy area that you could think is your lot, but it's not. It's part of the dedicated right-of-way for Campfire Drive. All right, well. But because the road isn't put where it's supposed to be. On Campfire? Campfire Drive. But you're saying the southern pins on all lots one through six are in place, and you know, as far as I and, know, there and is. you know where your property boundary is. Right? Can can I say that I've ever walked up there and, and found? I don't. I've never done the, the one along campfire. That's not not has never. We've we've never even considered developing it. At one time when we bought the property, we were thinking, yeah, well, this is kind of cool. It's already subdivided into six lots, but as time goes by, and property taxes go up on it. That's what equalization says, is just, just incorporate these into C and D, or D, and then it would become all one, but you gotta ensure that Vic Drive has access to it, and that's, so we weren't, we weren't I don't think to, we're opposed to that, and I'm not, all I'm just saying is, is that frontage on Campfire Drive should be defined. Okay. Well, um, I guess I can go make sure the pins are there. I've never actually, I, I don't know why they wouldn't be there. They're in, they're in every other lot quarter. But I, have I personally walked that line to find them? No, I have not walked that, that campfire drive to see if those pins well, are and there. ultimately it would be your responsibility not to encroach, but trying to save you problems down the road in case you decide you put a shed and you think or some building there, you know, and we want to make sure that it's not in what would have been the platted right away. So if you're telling me to go find the pins, I could go find the pins. <clears throat> 
Well, you're saying they're found with the, just on the final action on the final uh, minor plat, just have them shown. Okay. Well, Michelle has a suggestion, okay. if I can read it. Um, revised plat to correctly reflect location of Vic Drive and clearly define property boundaries and existing roads, easements, and right-of-ways. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, since I brought up, I guess any other questions are on this action? Since I brought it up, well, I guess I'll make the motion to approve for staff's recommendation with the changed verbiage. Condition three. Uh, con on condition three. Uh, so uh, move approval of the layout plat PL 17 14 with 12 conditions and the uh, uh, revision to three as read. Second. Motion is second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> Motion carried. Thank you. Item 12. <coughs> One second, please. Oh, we didn't make it over. No, oh, there it is, 1701. Item 12 is rezone 1705. Sorry, these are old numbers because we didn't, we didn't recreate the uh, slide. We just used an old one. Rezone 1705, the rezone 31.85 acres from General Agriculture District to Limited Agriculture District. The applicants are Deb is Deborah Munyon. Other land owner is Harry Munyon with the uh, surveyor DC uh, Scott Surveying Incorporated. And the agent is in the off, uh, audience today if you have any questions. This has been before you several times um, as number one, it's located past the Bradsky Road Bridge, which has been in the news lately. Also, um, because of a uh, subdivision request due to um, a uh, court filing and a court order. Uh, the current existing uh, conditions of the property is uh, zone general agriculture, which has a minimum lot size of 40 acres and it's legal non-conforming. Future land use zoning is limited agriculture district. And again, it takes access off of Bratsky Road. It is located within the Bratsky Road district. Uh, one of the lots contain, the lot as it exists today, contains a single family residence, a uh, barn building, it has a current operating permit, and is not located in a special flood hazard area. On March 7th, 2017, the Board of Commissioners approved a minor plat um, for these properties and condition number one stated that upon filing the plat with the Registry of Deeds, um, a deed restriction must also be filed restricting the residential use of proposed lot two until such a time that a second means of ingress and egress is constructed. So that was directly a result of the Bratsky Road, uh, the Bratsky Bridge concern. Condition number two was that prior to filing a plat with Register Deed, proposed lot one and two be rezoned or an approved lot size variance be obtained. The applicants did apply for a lot size uh, variance and on August 3rd, uh, April 3rd, 2017, the Board of uh, Adjustment denied that request. So then their only other choice was to rezone. So hence this request. Uh, future land use within one half mile of subject property is General Agriculture District, Limited Agriculture District, and Low Density Residential District. And there is no comprehensive plan amendment for this application as the future land use, again, is limited agriculture, which is what they're asking for. This was routed through the interdepartmental review. No items of concern came back. Uh, the applicant's request is due in part to a court order subdivision of the parent parcel. And the applicant's request is consistent with the existing land use and the future land use. And therefore, staff recommends approval of rezone 1705. Questions for PJ. What is the court ordered? What has the court ordered and why? I'll leave that up to them. Good morning. My name is Dean Scott. Um, it's a product of a divorce and the decree was for the property to be divided between the parties. And uh, Deborah is to retain the smaller acreage, but the home and uh, barn. And Mr. Harry Munyon is to receive the 20 acres of pasture land. And he has agreed to the restriction that his lot not contain any residential structures for residential use until such time as Bradsky Road is no longer a dead end or some other, whatever was in the deed restriction that was already worked through. And uh, yeah, basically 
we, we had applied for the lot size variance. Our impression was that that was probably what was desired. I don't think the, the landowners actually have a preference, lot size variance or rezone. Uh, they're just hoping to get the property divided and, and that's it. Thank you. That's, that clarifies everything. Yeah, thank you. Other questions for Mr. Scott? Thanks. Other questions for PJ? Staff recommendation for his approval of the rezone. If the rezone uh, can't have uh, any conditions, so uh, entertain a motion for approval for staff's recommendation. Mr. I'll move. Chairman, I um, make a motion to re uh, rezone uh, RZ 17 05 be approved with. No conditions on it. Oh, no reasons. conditions, yeah. Okay. Second. I have a motion and second. Further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item 13. Item 13 is rezone 1706 and comprehensive plan amendment 1706 to rezone 2.1 acres of general agriculture district to general commercial district and to amend the Pennington County Comprehensive uh, Plan to change the future land use to General Commercial District. The applicant is Patrick Foley, uh, Davis Engineering as the agent. And again, this is uh, incorporating 2.1 acres. Uh, the property as it exists today is three separate parcels. I'm trying to get a good picture of it here, but I don't have one. I apologize with that. Um, but the three, par the three detached parcels combined total 96.02 acres. The only one that they're looking to rezone is the one that's highlighted in red where it says subject property. Uh, the reason that they're doing this is looking, it's going to be deeded off and sold. This is located within the Rapid City Platting jurisdiction, and this is part of the process for the plat with Rapid City. Um, they're very well into that process right now. Uh, there is no special flood hazard area on the subject property. Uh, this was routed through the interdepartmental review. C Rapid City uh, Public Works commented that Public Works Engineering and City Planning do not object to the proposed zoning and comprehensive plan amendment. Applicant is attempting to plat and eventually transfer the small isolated portions um, of property along US Highway 79. Uh, Rapid City's long range planning commented that their plan, the Rapid City identifies the future land use of the property as rural residential. And just as a note for the record, that South Dakota Department of Transportation commented that although this is not being requested, please let the applicant know that no additional direct access will be granted to South Dakota 79 as a result of the rezoned. Uh, the applicant's request appears in harmony with the existing land use zoning in the area as there is a uh, general commercial currently in the area, all highlighted in red. And in the future land use on the right slide, uh, a lot of the general commercial to the west of 79 turns to plan unit development. However, there is general commercial that was recently rezoned uh, just to the north of the subject property and east of 79, which is part of Mit, um, Mr. Uh, Mitch Morris's property. Uh, staff recommends approval of rezone 1706 and comprehensive plan amendment 1706. Questions for PJ? Just as a note, this will not affect the other portions of this parcel, just this 2.1 acres. Mr. Chair, I just have a general question. Is it typical to have three separate parcels be labeled or be part of the same property description and have various zoning on each of those? We see it a lot, and that's one of the things we're hoping, as far as zoning at least, we're hoping to correct in the future. Okay. Just seems like that could get confusing over time. Yeah. It gets worse when it's one contiguous property and there's two or three different zonings on just one property. <laughs> I don't have a question so much as a comment is, and I guess we don't have dimensions here, but uh, said the city planning identifies as uh, rural residential. Uh, th that strip is so narrow, I, uh, would that even work as residential? Uh, that would be a question for Kip Harrington who commented. Yep. I more, more of a comment, like I said, than a question. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, staff's recommendation is for uh, approval of the rezone and comp plan amendment. Uh, entertain a motion to that effect. 
I'll move to approve uh, rezone 17-06 and comprehend uh, plan amendment CA 17-06. Do they need to be separate actions or can they be done at the same time? It can be one. That's my motion then. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion. <coughs> Item 14. Item 14 is uh, major plan unit development 1704. Uh, to amend the existing plan unit development in accordance with Section 213 of the Panting County Zoning Ordinance. The applicant is Kelly Development. Uh, Ryan Kelly is the agent who does not appear to be in the audience today. Uh, the size of the subject property is 11.15 acres. Aside from it being mostly vacant, there is a pole barn on the subject property. Um, if I can go through all this or if there's any concern, I don't know if you guys have any questions. Do you want to? Well, I got the impression... Uh... Th that they weren't necessarily, I mean, I know Mr. Kelly has been pushing the private wells on the lots, and I didn't know if that's still his position. I assumed that he would have been here to speak up on it. Uh, I guess uh, that's what we assume. I know you can't read his mind, but I mean, are you anticipating that? And should this be continued to give him an opportunity to speak? I think it'd be good because of the amount of time we've spent on this with his plats and the questions that have come up. Um, a continuation wouldn't be out of the question. Um, the applicant, Mr. Kelly, did request to, to remove the well restriction from the lots, and staff is recommending to put it back in. So I think it would be good if he was here to comment. Well, with that, I would think a continuation would be in order. And I think there's other questions that we have specifically regarding the wells and the water supply. Absolutely. So. Correct. I, I, Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion, unless we need to have any kind of discussion, because I know there's someone in the audience that's part of this. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. because... They may um, not be here for the next time when we continue. Well, and if, if we have a motion that can go to discussion, it would be on con whether it's continued or not. So now would be a more appropriate time to right. hear the audience. So, yeah. Uh, any more questions for I, PJ before we go to the audience? Mr. Chair, I do. Um, I wasn't sure exactly what staff comments to the above list of amended PUD conditions. It said the uh, item A on page 14 of 17. It says what that. Page 17? 14 of 17. It says that, that a time limit be placed on condition 12 oh, and sure. that time be after the proposed lots are created by filing a document with the Register of Deeds. And then t but 12 discusses join and remain a part of the Homeowners Association. So you're just saying your, your guys' recommendation is, is that they have to join that association within a certain amount of time? Yes, that, that there be a limit on it. Not, okay. not be an open-ended be done in 10 or 20 years. So like six months or... It, I circled it as a discussion item for today so that we could set a time limit on it. And that would that be, recommendation make it into your recommended conditions? No, it didn't. That's why I was going to open it up for discussion. Would also be something probably good for the applicant because to be here for, as I know he's subdividing them to be able to sell them off. Okay. Um, And then I, I, my second question was, I, I agree with your part B there that condition number 24 remain, but I didn't see that necessarily come through in the PUD um, parts. And so maybe it's more of a procedural question than anything. If something's stipulated for a minor plat and is required as a minor plat, but it's within a PUD, does that, to, do those conditions need to match up, or is or can the condition that's put on the minor plat stand and doesn't necessarily need to be defined in the PUD? They sometimes overlap, but usually they're mutually exclusive. Okay. So just because it doesn't, it isn't listed in the 22 conditions that you have for the PUD doesn't mean that it still isn't a requirement of that minor plat. Correct, but it is listed as number 20 that no private wells be drilled on any individual lots. Okay. All right. I think I got for the PUD. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions Any for PJ? Questions? Go to the audience then, ma'am. <coughs> Hi, my name is Elaine Karski, and I am a Sheridan Lake Highlands resident and also a board member of the Road District and the HOA. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, my questions are more along the line of just clarifications of exactly what 
um, the planning and zoning. We've been working very closely with them and through our attorney. And actually, we are working very closely with Ryan. Um, um, in regards to the time limit um, on the HOA, um, we, I, I, do, I do like that there would be one on there. It's been quite some time, and now it would be wise to have something in there before he starts selling those lots. Um, in regards to number um, condition B, um, that 24 remain, which they have added, thank you, mm -hmm. um, about the no private wells will be drilled on any individual lots. Um, in previous minutes and or conditions, um, the applicant was asked to provide documentation confirming the current water supply distribution system could handle the four additional lots and what, or engineered plans of some sort, and that has not in this condition any longer. So we noticed that that was missing and we didn't know for sure if that was an administrative issue or how that would be taken care of. And that's really just a clarification so that we know if in fact we own the system two months from now, what's the clarification on that? Um, Jay, if you can maybe answer that. Yeah, sure. Uh, PJ Convert, Planning Department. Um, it is uh, a condition of the minor plat number five, right, right, right here, that he can't even create the lots until he gets that study done and okay. shows us. So that still remains. That's yes, the confusion we had. We yes. weren't sure if that still remained it or if these just completely overrode. And I think that that's kind of where Rich no. was going too. Yes. No, uh, the PUD amendments are more of like, a PUD is a zoning, and the conditions in the PUD are kind of like how those lots can be used. Okay, yep. all right, yep. thank that you, because no that does. I'm okay. trying to understand as much as possible about a minor versus a major versus what can be changed and not changed. Um, thank you for that. That is important that that remain there. Um, so let's say that the HOA owns the water system in two months from now. Is that something we would provide to you? Or would that be whomever does the build out provides that? Is it because these conditions typically run with the land? BJ, did mm -hmm. you yes, mean number six? Because number five says no off premise signs. Um, page eight of 17, ma'am. Eight of 17. Yep, number five. And those were in that April 4th. Mm -hmm. Uh, the condition reads that prior, it's a long one, that prior to this minor plat being recorded with the registered deeds for the proposed lots, the applicant provide water supply information for all the proposed lots, three through six. If the proposed lots will not uh, connect to the existing water system, the applicant shall provide documentation confirming the current water supply and distribution system is adequate uh, to handle the increase in use and that connecting the three additional lots will not have a negative impact on the water supply for the existing platted lots within the development. So in here it does say the applicant shall provide, so that may, if you guys are gonna end up owning it, that may be a, an issue. So, and we've, I'm sorry. So number five doesn't need to be restated in the conditions here? No, if he, because number five, if depending on whatever happens, those lots might not even be created in the first place. Okay. Yeah. So. And then in number five, would that be, because my understanding is the conditions are such that he has to join the current water system. Those lots have to join the current water system. Is that my understanding? That's my understanding. So part of number five then is not applicable any longer. The ifs in there? Yeah, and that's for the minor plat for him to create the lots. Yep. Okay. Correct. And then I believe it was. I'm trying to find this condition for you. PJ, I don't, maybe I'm not correct on this, but I mean, if the HOA purchased the water system and serving that many homes, I mean, I think we were talking about it. This is on the verge of meeting the conditions, or maybe does meet the condition of a small community water system. It does so, already, sir. So DNR would you'd be required to supply all that information to DNR to keep your system as a small that community water system. That is something I'm getting clarification from um, from Mark Mayer also. I just didn't know how the county fits in there with mm -hmm. DENR and how I, it I all works. I would say works. at that point it would be more of a DNR jurisdiction, wouldn't it? Uh, 
I, we're trying when to I guess to that, I don't know what that fine line is on those. Well, we're trying so. to assure that the developer is providing that for the property owners. Say, if the property owners become the owner and they're running the system and it's uh, regulated as a small community water system, not only adequacy of water, but I mean even financial responsibility and ability to maintain a water system mm -hmm. and having an operator and mm -hmm. all, all that goes with it. So. Yep. So I think your, your request was for number five on the minor plat on page eight of 17, who would be responsible for, for, for that at the time? And yeah, at the time of who owns it, it and or? Yeah, we put in here that the applicant yeah. shall provide, which that might, I mean, right now the applicant is Kelly Development, yeah. which that might I think this clarifies change. it also for Ryan, so he knows too. We just, there is a very fine line between what the county, I've learned over the years, from what needs to be at the county level versus what's at the state level. And that's throwing the city too, but in this instance, they don't have to be involved with this. But South Dakota has very limited consumer protections on individual wells, I have found, so. Mr. Chair, this is my understanding. In the PUD, we're going to say that for these lots, that no private wells will be drilled on any individual lots. So he will be restricted moving forward drilling wells on those individual lots. Number five in the, in the minor plat will require him uh, to do so. And, and the difference here is, is that if you guys own the, all the water system, he's gonna be forced to work with you guys as opposed to he owns it now and he, and he has to do the exact same thing. He's still gonna have to prove that, um, that the, the water system is capable of doing, of supplying that water. So this is how I understand the and, and prior to the lots even being created. Right. Okay. And so if, if in fact, it's, he determ that it's determined through engineering that additional wells shall be drilled and it's on those lots, then would it, one of those lots, that wherever that well is, become another well lot? And it would have to require then a re, what do you call it? Is that a replat to mark that out for an easement purposes on one of those lots? It says that no private wells will be drilled on any individual lots. So there could be no well over there. Well, it's a, I think that's different, though. You're saying the HOA has purchased it's no longer a private well in, in some ways, I guess, it depends on how you de legally define private. I mean, I guess, you know, uh, if the HOA incorporates and that's part of the HOA, is that a public? Uh, Would you change the condition to take out the word private? <clears throat> At this point, I don't know if we would Because they it's may old. need to, I mean, if we say no wells, I mean, uh, you're saying you may need one. Yeah, if he, in fact, finds out, I mean, not only, let's just say in the future, it's, uh, I you believe, find out or he finds out through engineering that, in fact, another well would be sufficient to, to help support the, the four new lots, where would, could he actually even put another well on that with that stipulation? There's a process involved where he could come, whoever could come in and amend the PUD and amend that condition if needed. I, I think the whole intent was to, to avoid forcing each lot to drill their own well, and then they don't have, you know, especially with the E. coli, situations and you know then they don't have a good way to treat water because exactly. you don't have an operator and all that and, and that's, they're not they're not informed of what they're buying so they don't no. know yeah completely understand completely agree just just ahead of that clarification but i now that i understand that that number five comes forward with it that helps okay there was this residents asking me those the questions i'm presenting are questions that i get from the residents so on behalf of them Is that, Rich, is that? I, it, it makes sense in my mind. I mean, the, the letter at the back of the packet is the exact scenario that was discussed uh, and, and what we were trying to avoid is, is that, um, you know, everybody pokes a little hole in the ground in their own lot and then and all of a sudden we've got one deeper well and it's draining the water down below those and those go dry. And then you have, like you said, Sig, the, the situation where the, we, there's known E. coli in, in that alluvial aquifer or whatever it is. And, uh, and then we, you have a homeowner that has their own private well and they, they have no idea because they're not testing. So the intent was to, if there's further development out there, that they need to connect to this system because this system is, has safeguards in place to treat the water. 
Huh? I think, and also to protect uh, from overuse, because water is a problem for you. Oh, yeah, better, yeah, it could create a conflict, right. which was discussed before at the meetings. Further questions? Um, yes, I had um, one other question, and that was in regards to PJ. You might as well stay here because you yep, can help I me am with this. I'm sure. Catch what um, on. Number nineteen, in regards to what I will say, grandfathering in the um, accessory uh, accessory structure. Um, does it require then that a primary resident residence be built on that lot? Is that a condition for it to remain? So in a PUD, it's a lot it's a lot different than our other zoning ordinances. So the applicants can request to bring a prop, an item of structure into compliance through a condition. This was built prior to 1994, which gives it that legal non-conforming status. So with this condition, it erases any questions about it and brings it into compliance. So it, it's basically saying that in this planned unit development, that structure is allowed. Okay. So it doesn't really, it doesn't, um, um, in other words, that lot is still subject to the covenants once it joins the HOA. It, it doesn't affect future use, would that be? Future use. <clears throat> the fact that this building exists does not affect future use of the land. Um, well, other than taking up valuable space on the property. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. but um, the we, county doesn't enforce any covenants. Well, that's, okay. that's, for, that's, 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 that's a whole different... Except for VHRs. Right. Okay, yeah. so that's just something that the HOA deals with. Right. Yeah. Okay, right. all right. Um, does it have to comply with setbacks from the property lines? Because of the year it was built, it's legal nonconforming. As long as they don't increase the nonconformity or, or make it worse. Okay. So if they're supposed to be 20 feet and they're 15, they can't make it 10. Gotcha. So it really grandfathers it in against those yes. setbacks. Okay. Yep. Um, and then um, I, these questions are kind of revolving around um, what's the zoning of that those four lots? Will they be single family resident? They're going to be planned unit development. That's so. It's that's just, what this. That's what this. That's whole what that is, is all for. about. Yep. Exactly. So so as far as so it still remains no commercial. Yep, these are the businesses. Yep, everything that's written in here, you know, the conditions okay. for lots three through six, lot one and two will still remain under the old PUD. Yeah, they're already a member of the HOA. Yep. Okay. Yeah, okay. Because what I think what the resident is is asking me is there's a lot of storage of construction vehicles there right now. There's um abandoned vehicle. There's miscellaneous building supplies. So they're just wondering if that will eventually get cleaned up or if that will always be. That, uh, that, 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 they that, can, that could be through ordinance enforcement. Could. Well, not only that, but with a PUD, um, because of those concerns, that's something that can be put into condition or not put into condition to be allowed. So, because the condition only allows the, the structure there, it doesn't say what it can be used for. So, maybe clarity on the use of that structure might be a that good idea. That might address a couple of the residents that I'm talking to that they're concerned about. It's mm -hmm. The building was there, and honestly, to be honest, we agreed with Ryan, the board that was in 2012, to allow the structure to remain. We, it just seemed somewhat of a waste to take it down if somebody could use it. But at that time, the lot sizes were much bigger so that there would actually be room for a resident on there. And so between the, um, the section line running between four and five, um, I just don't know if there's room on the lot for a residence, so that's what their concern was about. And we will address the, he has started to do some of the mowing. There's just some, there's still some weeds, but we can deal with that. He's been very, at we've these, been working very close with him, so. These photos are probably a year and a half old. They probably are, yeah. <laughs> How much has changed out there? <laughs> Not too much, but yeah. um, there's a few more vehicles and stuff. He, you know, he tends to use that to store his construction equipment. Um, whether he's building out in the development or not. So we were just wondering about, the residents were asking about that, and so I, that's why I wanted to bring it up. I think that clarifies. Okay. 
We wouldn't be many probably at this time if we're our action and if we're thinking of continuing to be part of the next. If webinar. you want to continue it, I'll, I'll talk with the applicant about amending the, the conditions as written and then have them for you next the next time it is heard. I believe the planning commission is leaning towards continuing, but we don't have a motion yet. I'll make a motion that we continue um, major plan unit development PU 1704 to the meeting yeah. of July 10th. Barbara, you can hold on a second. Was there anyone else wishing to speak on oh. this? Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion and second. Further discussion on continuing? Uh, did you want to set a date with it? July 10th, that'd July be the 10th. next okay. meeting. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify it by saying aye. 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 Uh, motion carried. Uh, opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Uh, item 14 is continued to July 10th. That will take us to <coughs> item 15. Item 15 is county board report. The Board of Commissioners concurred with the Planning Commission's recommendations from the June 12, 2017 meeting. Item of note, the Board of Commissioners also made a motion at their June 20th meeting to move their July 5th meeting to Tuesday, July 11th at 9 a.m. Uh, that also moves the interviews for Planning Commission spots. So does that mean you're stuck here, SIG? Through Drew, <laughs> July 10th. You and Barbara both. Yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> we volunteered, though. <laughs> Voluntold. Yeah, you, you were supposed to continue to uh, July 24th. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, uh, anyway, I think July 10th is appropriate on that one. But anyway, items from the public. Anyone wishing to speak? Items from staff. Comp uh, plan update. Yep, one item. Um, Last week, uh, Rick Russ from Matrix Design Group uh, was in doing the second series of public uh, interviews. And we met in Keystone, we met in Rapid City, and we met out in the wall again. I think he's probably still hovering around the same amount of numbers, maybe 30, 32 total at all the different spots where we're hoping for more of a, a turnout, especially in the uh, beginning stages when it really sets the, the kind of the cornerstone of what he's going to look at and the direction he's going to look at it. Uh, the next series of meetings that are coming up. Again, there's five sets of three meetings, and we've done two sets so far. Uh, the next series of meetings are going to be the critical ones where they're actually going to be down in physically changing, re requesting to change maps, rezoning what is currently zoned, changing the uses of certain areas, changing what is allowed in certain zoning districts, creating new zoning districts. So the next few meetings that we have are going to be uh, extremely critical. So if you, get, if you can help us get the word out, we'd appreciate it. Um, what I do have is a 10-minute uh, a video on last Tuesday during the Board of Commissioners meeting. Rick was here to give kind of an update on Workshop 1. Um, it's only, I think, a 10 to 12-minute video. If it's okay, I'll just play it. He'll just, you can hear in his words, the review of Workshop 1. Mr. Chair, is that okay? Yeah, please proceed. Okay. You got volume, Andy? So, uh, Mr. Rick Ross, Vice President for Matrix uh, Design Group, is here actually to give us an update on the workshops that were conducted a couple months ago. Uh, first, we had one meeting in Hill City, one in Rapid City, and one in Wall. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Rust. Good morning, Rick. Well, good morning. Uh, it's good to be back here, and we have another full week of activities in Pennington County. Wanted to give you a quick update. I know you've got many things on your agenda today, so be a little auctioneer for you, but certainly can slow me down if you need to know anything further. Um, Want to give you an update on what's happened as far as our first set of workshops, which were in April, uh, a little bit about what we're doing now, which is the existing conditions review, and then the upcoming public workshops that we have starting uh, tonight. Uh, as far as project status, this is our overall task listings. A number of things are currently in process. Our main focus right now is doing the existing conditions and trends write-ups. So this is looking at all the factors that influence your future and provide a good statistical background, if you will, for some of the items that we look at. Items that have been prepared, um, you've all seen the flyer that we did for the first workshop, and we'll pass that out again tonight. Uh, we had three public workshops at different areas of the county, which we'll go into in a few minutes. 
and um, also have developed a website, which is a good resource for everyone in the county to keep up with the project at view2240.com. Uh, and from here on the right side of the page, you'll see a green tab. If anybody wants to make a comment in the future, they can click on that and provide their comments. And the orange tab is a good way to join our email list. As far as workshop number one, um, as with all of our public workshops, they're held at three different areas of the county, kind of similar to the logo and how we reflect the, uh, the hill areas, more in the rapid city and the urbanized uh, components of the county. And then on the east end, uh, we had a meeting out in the uh, city of Wall. During that meeting, we asked some general questions, kind of like a good chance to get familiar with our, our group. And that group was about 32 people in total for the different workshops, so we had about 10 to 12 that would show up at each one. So these are not statistical results by any means, but for these 30 people, it gives you a snapshot in time. Um, how long have you lived? It's very often we get uh, those that have lived here longer to participate, but we also had some that were only here in the one to five years. So it does provide us a broader range of inputs on what are the needs of our current residents as well as those that may come in the future. <laughs> As far as how they found out about the meeting, word of mouth and other, and the other was usually an email chain of somebody passing it on to somebody else or their Facebook posts, et cetera. And we encourage anybody to help us get the word out because the more people that we can have at these workshops, the better results we'll get out of it. This is kind of interesting from heck when you ask people, are they familiar with the comprehensive plan or even do they know it exists? Um, and for most, it was no. Um, we had a few that had some uh, general idea about what it was in general, but not the details of it. So that's an important part of our outreach at this time is to get more people familiar with the document because we think it provides a better document long term and also provides for better implementation as we go forward. Just to get some general ideas of how people perceive the school system um, in general, most were thinking it was uh, very good to good which is an important part of developing an economic development potential and workforce in the future is to have that good education system. How would you rate county services? Actually, this is a pretty good score for most places we've been. Um, there seems to be good to average as far as appreciation of the overall county service set, and so that's actually a pretty good rating. By and far, we ask about what are the biggest assets for the future, quality of life was the big deal be it the rural lifestyle, the natural resources in the area, the wide open spaces, um, that quality of life that people uh, grew up with or moved here for is a major part of what people want to preserve. Biggest threats, we're talking about lack of jobs, jobs that could sustain a family. Um, range of housing was a big deal in a couple of different locations we were at as far as providing um, some choice or providing any housing in some places they felt they didn't have anything to even buy if they would like to and then infrastructure just maintaining the infrastructure moving forward in the future you think the county should have building codes and building inspections and the answer for that was 50% said yes with another 34% yes depending on the type this is one of the questions we'll follow up with the the community members tonight is asking, well, what types of things do you think that's appropriate for? What are you really looking to do and how does that vary? Now, we had three very divergent parts of the county and the answers were different depending on which part of the county we're in. And as we've talked with uh, all of you before, uh, we're looking to develop a comprehensive plan that addresses different um, looks at how we provide the comprehensive plan as we go to different areas within the county. Parts that are right around uh, Rapid City and other uh, communities may need different kind of looks than somewhere on the far east side of the county or even up in the, the hill areas. So we want to make sure that we provide a comprehensive plan that matches those needs and doesn't try to provide one size to fit all. Does the county have appropriate controls on septic? This one varied quite a bit depending on where you were located, but most came out with it being just right um, as far as what's currently being required. And the last one, should structures be excluded from floodways? Um, depends on location was part of the answer. This was more in the rural areas where they felt accessory structures and other small structures are appropriate in those kind of areas. Um, but in more developed areas, this was something to stay clear of. We asked people to give us their ideas on <coughs> opportunities and issues. And we really push people to give you the positive things or the opportunities because it's very easy to write what are some issues to be addressed. But we press them to give us some good opportunities because these are important for us to take advantage of. So you can see on here are the top items that came up, um, recreation amenities and opportunities, good natural resources, the tourist industry in general, educational institutions such as the college, 
value-added agriculture was an opportunity, taking the products that are produced here and actually converting them into the next stage of development and getting, uh, capturing more of the money off of that agricultural resource, and historic resources as they exist throughout the county. Top issues were lack of affordable housing, and when we say affordable here, we're talking about workforce housing. Um, if a family makes a decent income, can they afford to buy a home in the areas they would like to live? Road maintenance. Um, disconnect with county commissioners, this is more on the line of just the size of the county and you know, being able to get a face-to-face -face sometimes with different commissioners. Uh, inequalities in taxation, lack of year-round jobs, and different level of service for rural and urban communities and how that should be set up. And there obviously are differences in that. You don't have sewer pipes that run out to the far reaches of the county, so you're going to have some differences, but how to set those expectations. We try, worked with the uh, individuals on developing a vision statement, that is, what do they picture the county being in 2040? And some of the top assets, adjectives, values, we gave them a kind of fill-in-the-blank sheet if they'd like to start with that, and they could pick out certain words or develop their own as far as what they would describe the county in the future. And the vision statement that they sort of uh, worked on, and we'll have them work on this a little bit more in the next few days, uh, Pennington County is a unique part of South Dakota that is built on a sense of community and security. We pride ourselves on having natural, cultural, and historic resources that respond to our many needs. The county continues to grow in a manner that assures new growth, improves careers, housing, and retains our excellent schools and quality of life. So you can kind of see some of those flavors that came in from the issues and opportunities are showing themselves up as we go through this vision statement. Now, vision statement provides kind of a guide for how we move forward in some of our policy work, and this will be something we'll touch on you uh, with you again, as well as at our workshops the next few days. As I mentioned, one of the big things we're going through right now is existing conditions review. Um, it's important for us to understand where we are and how we relate to the state or other areas in the, um, the state, and uh, what are our trends that we're facing for the future? How big are we going to grow? What kind of housing needs do we have, and where is that happening? Um, we, I won't go through the whole set, um, but if you'd like to hear, see more, come to the public workshops and we'll give you a bigger set of uh, graphics. Um, but as far as the county's population, it is growing, although the trends, it's flatter in the unincorporated areas and growing at a steeper rate in the incorporated uh, communities. Um, the growth rate overall, um, looking at now, you're about 106,000 and going in 2035 to 130,000. This is just based on statistics that were developed by the South Dakota State University Census Data Center. And we've got to project this out a little bit further, 2040, to match where we're going. Countywide, looking at, so the existing conditions provides us a look at a wide range of things. Population, housing, incomes. Here's a picture for employment and showing where the major employment sectors are in the county. And again, this is important because it helps you figure out which areas are being successful, which areas you need to focus on, which areas you may have thought were always the big deals, but maybe aren't, and you may be moving your resources to other ways. So this is just, uh, this is what that document provides for us as a good basis of looking forward. All right, so, wanted to highlight and advertise and take this opportunity since you have a crowd here today. Uh, we have three uh, workshops coming up. We're going to be in Keystone tonight at the uh, Keystone Community Center. All these meetings start at 6 p.m. All the meetings are exactly the same except for those that are involved. Um, so come to anyone you'd like. They're not specific to the area, but certainly have that kind of focus. We'll be in Wall on Wednesday night um, out at their brand new Wall Community Center. Um, and then also in Rapid City, uh, we're going out to the Black Hills University this time um, to provide us kind of a middle ground between Rapid City, Box Elder, and the other um, the county areas in that middle uh, range. So we welcome anybody to come join us um, for those meetings. Tonight we'll be talking about, we'll look at that final vision statement, have people help us refine and tweak it. We'll also take some of those issues and opportunities they identified and have a, them give us a little bit more specifics because those are a little bit broad still. We need to kind of narrow that down to what actually is being looked for. Our next uh, workshops will be on actual alternatives. Alternatives deal on two different things. One is the things you might see like land use. So for instance, at the workshops, we'll be asking people, where would you like housing to be developed around the different communities, especially the unincorporated <coughs> community areas? Um, so we'll have a land use map and changes that may come with that. And then we'll also have topical alternatives that deal with specific topics, like 
natural resources perhaps or transportation, other items that are important to a comprehensive plan. For as the name alludes, we cover a broad range of topics that are important to the future of the county. We'll be back to talk about alternatives in the fall. We'll wait till we get after the tourist season because I know we, we tried to sneak in right at the very beginning of it now and it's getting busy for some of our business owners and such to be involved. So we'll hit that up in the fall after uh, Labor Day and go through some of those alternatives. Uh, over the summer, we'll also be producing the uh, existing conditions and trends reports. So you'll be able to look at that and uh, take advantage of all that information. So we said, like, keep up. There's the website address and hopefully uh, <coughs> Didn't auctioneer my way there too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Board, do we have any questions for Mr. Rust? <clears throat> um, thank you, Mr. Rust. Um, Eye-opening for me. Um, some areas where I thought we were, I knew, I guess I didn't. And other areas, it's like, wow, um, you're really being thorough on what you're doing, and I appreciate that. And that's, at first, I really... I knew, no, I wasn't a little apprehensive, I'm not going to lie about doing a comprehensive plan, but um, I'm impressed. So I appreciate everything you're doing in the county, uh, going to each area. Um, that was um, something that I think is, is commendable because I don't think if you don't hear from the constituents in our areas, then we really, you know, we're not getting the whole picture of what we need to do for the future. So I really appreciate that too. Right. Well, thank you so, very much. Thank you, sir, for coming. Oh. Next, we have the library's update. We have Hill City first and then Rapid City. Thank you for playing that for us. No problem. And uh, like he said, uh, the next series of workshops, he's, uh, he's projecting sometime in September. Does he have any suggestions for getting more people there? Uh, what we are doing is usually what he recommends, usually newspapers. and. He, in bigger areas get a lot more feedback. We devote a lot of mo time and money to newspapers, no less than 12 per workshop, I think. No, nine, three per paper, and there's three papers. Yeah, and these specific last meetings were advertised two weeks in May, the middle of May, and then one week prior to the meetings in June. Yep. Um, uh, and that also showed up as 6% of how people found out about it, so. I, we do have some ideas of what we're going to do, but I'm sorry, Commissioner. I, I think social media is the way to go because nobody's reading the newspapers anymore, <laughs> except that 6%. Yeah, um, it, it's interesting up in our office because we have the people that don't even have a computer that read the paper and people who don't read the paper and only yeah. look at the computer, and we try to hit them all. One of the things that we're looking at is working with the Treasurer's Department uh, because they send out mailers hundreds a month. Um, and we're going to try, once we get the dates, is sneak a little third page flyer into all of those. Um, we can't dictate where they're going to go, but we know that it's going to get out there countywide. Um, so we're just working with Janet and Annette right now to get that figured out. DJ, I know that, you know, specifically with Facebook, because I did run a campaign for State House of Representatives, you can actually focus in on Facebook to those in Pennington County, and it'll actually send out, you know, something in their news feeds or over like that about what's going on in the community. And it's actually really cheap to do uh, for a large volume of um, contacts. Okay. So that might be something since most, a lot of people are moving to that type of media news stuff okay. rather than the paper. And but I, it's really I, cheap. I have the same experience also involved in campaigns of one kind or another, mm -hmm. political and other, that uh, that's the way to go. Okay. One thing I did hear at, um, well, one of the meetings was people appreciated seeing it at post offices. So we're going to keep that up too. Well, uh, maybe you're doing this already, but like, you know, radio spots, I don't, I'm, don't know about the other radio station, but you know, like KOTA, you know, will have, you know, like the mayor spot once a week or something like that. Okay. Uh, are you guys doing radio spots like that or, uh, you know, getting on those kind of interview, local interview? No, we're not. But maybe we're not opposed to it either. You know, it would be great to have the some planning commissioners there too. It, you know, well, if you could like <laughs> uh, have Rick be interviewed, you know, yeah, when he's in town. Mm -hmm. yep. be, yeah, the next few visits. <laughs> yeah, that would be that's a great idea. The next few visits, he actually he doesn't come alone anymore. He has his team come with him, so his boss is actually coming, and there'll be a couple other people because the those, the meetings are that intensive. They need additional bodies. So radio spots, um, keep up the social media, look at Facebook, treasurers, 
mailings. If Isn't anybody there has a, t-shirts, maybe hats? <laughs> Isn't there a chamber of commerce <laughs> packet that gets sent oh, out yeah. once a month or something like that with a bunch of advertisements well, and whatnot in it? Even to the chamber members, uh, uh, emails are sent out all the time. <clears throat> we, have, yeah, we have contact over there. Chambers, you'd have Hill Cities, well. Rapid Cities. I'd send them a thing and see if they'll send something out. Let them let them do it. And I guess if there's a nominal fee or something like that associated with that advertising. But the quick math was is there's so 32 out of 100,000, we have three one hundredths of a percent. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you know, guiding this massive document. Uh, I don't know. What, what, what we've uh, done is hired hired specialists um, who do social media. You know, that's their work, that's their job, and they do a very good job if you get a good one. And I know we have an in-house guy. He's sitting on the other side of the glass over there, so we'll work with Andy <laughs> and see what he can do before. But these are all great ideas, and we'll definitely look into them. Jace, uh, you look at you're willing to speak, but I mean, we're past the public speaking, yeah. but I'll give you a some short leeway here. So, Joyce Chagru, if it helps any, I've attended both meetings, one in Hill City and then the one in Rapid City. And for what it's worth, uh, my observation is that people are coming in for something that impacts them right now. Like here in Rapid City, it was chickens out on Highway 44, <laughs> and that brought two of those 11 people. Or that is so it, when you advertise, if it's hard to think about out to 2040, and that's not really why they're coming. You know, they're, they're coming for today. And so to, to get people's minds to think in the future, you know, they don't want chickens today, or they don't want them, you know, 20 years from now either. But something about how this will impact us in the future, if there's a way to project that. Because at both, we're in there for right now, what's making us mm -hmm. itch, you know, that's oh. it. It's not a future kind of mm -hmm. thought that people come in with. Uh, Joyce is absolutely right. We have uh, a lot of neighbors keeping Mike, our ordinance officer, very busy. Uh, chickens, <laughs> has been, chickens has been one that's been uh -huh. um, taking a lot of time lately. Um, one of the things that we do tell people um, if they either are the complainant or the complainer, uh, the complainee, I guess, is that these are great opportunities to come and voice your opinion of what you think things should be. Um, I agree with Joyce that they do look at the here and now and we're looking at the future, um, but we are offering them that uh, venue, I guess, or the the space to be able to voice what's going on now so that hopefully something could change in the future. So, chickens. Thank you, Joyce, for your comments. So. Right. I think in the past, PJ, have you got your email contact lists and, and they've incorporated like the, the leadership in Hill City and them type people to get them involved and come to them, those emails? I mean, have... Is there somebody that's that's doing that also? Yeah. So what we do in each one of the areas where we go for a meeting, the first thing that we do either the day before or, the, or the, before the meeting is have a meeting with the elected officials or appointed officials in those towns. Okay. So before the meeting we had in Hill City, we met with the Hill City okay. um, Council and their planning person, their public works person. And we did the same thing in Rapid City, did the same thing in Wall, we did the same thing in Keystone, we went to Box Elder. Um, there's been a request to have a meeting out in New Underwood. Okay. Um, if anybody knows of a great place that could accommodate 50 people in New Underwood, not your house. The community center. <laughs> okay. Um, so we'd like to we're try and entertain that because we've had two in Wall, um, two in Rapid City, but at different locations, and then one in Hill City, one in Keystone, of course. So we're trying to move it around, get as many people as we can. That kind of changes those numbers a little bit because you're, you're actually talking to some of the elected officials and some of the other people that on the side from those meetings. Yeah, very few actually come to, because we have the private one-on-ones or group meetings, um, very few actually come back to the public yeah. meeting. Yeah. So we are getting their input. Okay. Yep. Anything else, PJ? Uh, nothing further. Are there items for membership? Do we have a meeting on August 21st? Twenty-fourth. 
the following Monday? 14th and 28th okay. of August. When's the meetings? 14th and 28th. August 14th and 28th. Oh, August, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to be gone on the 21st, so I thought I would. But that's what I needed. Thank you. And I might be out on the 24th. We'll see how that goes. Of July? Or? Of July. Okay. I may not be here for that one. I'll see how things look the week prior to that. Then I may or may not be here. Any other items from membership? If not, I'd entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried.